Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Normally I review law books. I don't go far away from those types of work, generally speaking, but this particular book got my attention for a lot of reasons. It's called In the Shadows. It's been written by Michael Ashcroft, Lord Ashcroft, who will be known to, to many of you. And it's actually a book about the extraordinary men and women of the Intelligence Corps. It's, it's published by Back... Uh, Bite back publishing, get the words right in the end. Um, I found it a very interesting book because, of course, I served in the Intelligence Corps as a private soldier, and now I've worked my way up a bit, um, which was a very long time ago, um, 45 years ago. So uh, obviously things have changed a great deal since I served in the, uh, the Army. Um, and I, I thought this book would be of interest. I gave the title, which uh, probably is very straightforward for anybody who knows about the core, and that is knowledge gives strength to the arm, which of course is the motto of the core. Now, let me have a look at the book, show you the book first of all, because uh, it's an important book. You can see um, some parachutists, very interesting there. Front, there's a forward by Lord Haig of Richmond, that's William Haig. There's the, shower, the, the actual um, spine. Then on the back, you've got a little quote. And in fact, Haig's quote is, every story in this book is a gripping individual drama reminding us that many intelligence corps operation operators have risked and in some cases lost their lives in pursuit of a mission. Taken together, these accounts combine a, to portray a remarkable organisation. Well, it's a core actually, William, but I'm not going to argue about that. Um, right, there's a picture of Ashcroft, Lord Ashcroft. Um, and I'm grateful to him for producing this work because um, a lot of people have very little idea of, about what the core does. You can see there is a, um, an index and the index is by uh, page number. A lot of people's names are mentioned. You'll probably know one or two of the names. Um, I'm not going to start commenting on the work I did or the names of the people involved. But what I, what I am saying is that you'll find the book, I think, uh, very helpful from uh, a number of points of view because the units, various units, including the one I served in, are mentioned but not in a great deal of detail. And of course there's a bit of blurb on the front which I will refer to again later on, that's of the dust cover. Then you've got um, the actual front page itself there, some other books written by Michael. And I'd like to thank him, I'm very grateful to him for producing this work from his company because um, I think it's important for people to know what um, what we do in the core. Now, you see, the first chapter is emergence. And I will say something again, which is going a little bit away from this book itself. But we've had intelligence work, intelligences, whatever you want to call them, around for many centuries. I mean, a very, very long time. But it was only during World War II, which would be in part two, that the core actually was identified and came into its own. And then there are a whole range of things like the war crimes investigations in Germany, the end of World War II. Then part three, of course, is the worldwide operations and development. The various matters that are covered. Um, the, the Falcons War is actually covered, and I'm not going to say anything about any of these, these things that I have been involved in. But um, what I am saying is you'll find it's useful. There is a section on what is sensitive, and that's Bricksmiths and Socksmiths. People will have heard about those organisations. And of course, Northern Ireland is mentioned as well. And then you've got the various stability operations, which a colleagues of mine were involved in, of course, in places such as former Yugoslavia, Iraq and Afghanistan. Then there's an epilogue at the back and a bibliography. And of course, there's a, a lot of acknowledgements, uh, people from all walks of life, including many former core members have uh, contributed. There are a number of people mentioned who I've seen the names um, here, and you can see them mentioned in the acknowledgements at the beginning. Um, and obviously he's gone to considerable trouble to get as much accurate information, which is available as unclassified information. Then the forward by Haig, um, which is usual, usual sort of stuff from him, uh, which is quite interesting. He, he's a sharp, uh, sharp um, watcher of what goes on. Then he's denoted all royalties uh, from In the Shadows to military charities, which is very good of him because 
we do need a little bit of help. Then it starts off with the introduction. This book is not a conventional work of military history, rather it's intended as a literary salute to the thousands of men and women who served in one of the most shadowy elements of the British Army, the Intelligence Corps. Well, I wouldn't put it quite like that myself, but however, it does actually sell the book, doesn't it, Michael? Now, there we are, part one, Emergence, and that talks about um, the way things were. Okay, in fact, he talks, he goes to uh, Lashkar Gar in Helmand province, talking about uh, what happened in June 2008. And obviously there are a number of points that are raised about that. And then running all the way through, there are some photographs which I thought, thought were quite useful. Again, I'm not going to show too many of them because of copyright and everything else. But there are a lot of interesting people who are shown in the um, pictures. Um, and as I say, some of them are really quite important. I mean, we obviously have within the core uh, photographs which are not for public consumption and a lot of information that is produced even today is actually classified so there is very little that I want to say about operational matters but what I did want to do is is thank the people involved in producing this book because the one question I have which goes to the heart really of, of when I first became involved with the intelligence corps was people said what do you do in the intelligence corps because most people at that time had very little idea of what we did. We did intelligence work and we did security work. Now if you want to know what the intelligence corps does today I'm not going to tell you. What I'm going to suggest you do is you google intelligence corps and you look at the website because the information there when I served was classified. It isn't anymore so you can see and pick for yourself what you think the core does but it is effectively dealing with the gathering of intelligence and I'm going to say one thing and, and not only that and that is there is something called the intelligence cycle which is the collection collation and dissemination of information and that it doesn't matter how it's done and then it's presented to senior officers and that basically is part of the work of the basic core work but there's a lot more to it than that and obviously the information that is in the book at the beginning uh, deals with the aftermath of World War II and the control of prisoners, which again is a, uh, is a responsibility of the Corps, certainly was then and still is to a certain extent, on the basis that people who are captured, the enemy, will have information you want. And you can see that that makes a lot of sense, so you give it to the Intelligence Corps to deal with. But this is what I like to say about the book. I was delighted to read the book about the Intelligence Corps, written by Ashcroft, because, as I say, I served in the Corps some 45 years ago. And it's described as one of the smallest and most secretive elements of the British Army. It's existed in various guises since the early 20th century, but it was only formally constituted in July 1940. Now, I say that because um, clearly in the First World War, uh, the Corps had a lot of important work to do, um, and again that is covered to a certain extent, but it wasn't identified as a Corps in those days. And even today you will have, and it's mentioned in the book, you will have a number of people who um, were cat-badged for a different um, arm of service, but they actually were working with or for the Intelligence Corps because they were collecting and acting as intelligence officers and therefore it, the label is a little bit confusing for some people but uh, as I've said before one of the things that a colleague of mine many years ago uh, produced something called the intelligencers it's written by a guy called Frank Logue um, he was um, an RSM he um, produced this work I don't know where he actually got the original stuff from but it, gives, it gave a history going back to the Middle Ages even uh, an Elizabethan times the Elizabethan court of the sort of intrigue that was going on even then but it goes back further than that since the dawn of time basically if you if you consider what happened in uh, many many centuries ago anyway in this book Ashcroft tells astonishing stories of some of the most courageous and ingenious figures who've operated all over the world from the first world war the great war to the present day and whether it's carrying out surveillance work on the streets, monitoring and analysing communications, 
working on overseas stakeouts, receiving classified information from well-placed contacts, or interrogating the enemy in the heat of war, there's a hugely diverse range of people who've served in the Corps, often supplementing their individual professional skills with original thinking and leadership in the name of the Crown. And the point about this particular book is that uh, Ashcroft pays tribute to them all and shows why, in the words of the first Duke of Marlborough, no war can be conducted successfully without early and good intelligence. And I think that's fundamental. And if you don't have that, you are going to have a lot of problems. I'm afraid in history we have seen some of the problems that have developed. The book itself was published on the 20th of December 2022 by Biteback and normally he does political books but uh, on this occasion he's done this one. Uh, anyway let's have a look, look, one last look at the book again. There it is. There's the spine and then the back. Now on the dust sheet um, he talks about um, the actual basic history, what I've just actually stated there. But if you get into the book itself you can get into some of the uh, very detailed information. And for instance, what you've got here um, is that there's, in, in this particular, this is part of the Second World War, what he does, and I'm not going to mention names again, because you'll find the names at the back, but he, he identifies a number of people who were very, very, what I would call key players at the time. And he talks about how they became involved and what they actually did. Because as the years roll by, we are going to find a lot more people who were involved in the work of the Corps in whatever guise, whatever work you want to talk about, in whatever functions they were carrying out. Uh, and you only find out about what they've really been doing when they've died. And in many ways that's probably the best way to deal with it. And there is also of course one last rider I will make and that is with the work of the Corps and the other services involved and everything else. The public will only get part of the picture. Um, there are documents, a lot of documents are sealed so that there will be a very long time before anything is known about what really went on. And so it's basically for the historians. This book is really trying to, <coughs> I suggest, give the ordinary reader some idea about what the core does. Not what's seen on television or in films, but what we actually really do. And the painstaking work that goes in to the function that we actually play as part of the British Army. And of course, <coughs> I think it's very important to bear in mind that the Intelligence Corps is a core of the British Army, but the concept of intelligence is tri-service. And a lot of the work is, of course, tri-service. And, of course, things are changing all the time with technology. So a very big thank you to Lord Ashcroft, to all the people involved. Um, as I said, I've deliberately not mentioned any names of any people particularly, well, anyone who's living anyway. Um, and I, I do think that um, if you're interested in the work of the Corps, this is a dispassionate and frank account. And it's as good as you're going to get without seeing something that's classified or would be declassified let's say at Q Archives, many years hence. But a big thank you to all. And I'm grateful because uh, I found it a very interesting time of my life. I met some very interesting people and I think they deserve a good tribute. They've got one here. Thank you. Bye-bye.